Welcome, makers. So it's great to be back after a year's break. I worked on all sorts of things, including leveling up my 3D modeling skills. And to kick things off, I am going to be going over this space toaster I created. Now, the space toaster is a Fallout inspired uh, speaker that will looks very much like a radio. So it, it gives that old radio vibe. And I did two different versions. One version here that is clearly a uh, Fallout inspired old speaker that looks like a relic that maybe somebody found from before the Holocaust. And then you've got the uh, other space toaster that I did in a glittery brown sparkle that looks a lot like Bakelite. And both of these speakers are absolutely fantastic sounding. And the best part of it, the speaker that you put in it is only around $15. So it's amazing that with just $15, and a few spare parts, you can make a 3D printed speaker that sounds absolutely outstanding. I want to get right into the speaker build, so let's not talk anymore and let's get to work. All right, so we're going to start by doing the back assembly first. What I've got here is uh, just push spring push uh, terminals and you'll be able to then easily hook up any speaker wire there. So super gluing this on, pretty straightforward. Um, I use this uh, CYA fixed, and I'll have a link in the description. You can attach these uh, little tubes that allow you to feed super glue in a very precise way. And then once you've got that in place, then you can trim these. Uh, I try to trim them right about here. And you can buy a whole pack of these things for just a few bucks. Uh, but what works really well is being able to just take your super glue. You can see it kind of feeding there through the tube and I can get pretty strategic with where that glue is being placed. All right, once the glue is in place, just drop the spring terminals in, being careful not to get any glue on your fingers. If you do, you can easily clean this up with acetone or nail polish remover. All right, so here I've got a speaker which I have soldered some leads onto. Essentially what you're gonna need as part of the speaker prep is to just take some wire, either connect the speakers uh, here with a short little lead. And then this is the part that is going to uh, plug into here in the back. And that's what will connect the speaker wires. Print one of the speaker rings that are in here. This makes the assembly uh, overall a lot easier. Uh, so what we're gonna do here is I just took a, the 3D print, inserted some uh, M4 brass nuts, um, Links will be in the description for all this. And then what you're gonna do is just, it doesn't matter which way you do this because the inside is uh, still gonna be a circle. Uh, and then you're just gonna attach the speaker to the speaker ring. And then what we'll do in the next step here, after we've polished up and got the outside of the enclosure looking the way that we want, we'll take the speaker and then the speaker ring gets glued onto the inside. So now we've got everything done here. All we've got to do is work on the exterior. So let's let's get the inlays in here. This part is really pretty easy to do. Um, so we're going to go back to our instant adhesive here. And this tube is going to be super helpful in getting in these tight areas. So the way I recommend getting started with this is before you get any glue in here, lay out your components for and, and test fit to make sure that you've got everything that uh, you know looks good here. So you can print these um, you know, face down to your build plate to try to get a smoother look. But what I find is even with elephant foot compensation, you might have a hard time you know, getting these to press in in the opposite direction. Honestly, I, I don't have a problem with the layer lines. It kind of adds the uniqueness of 3D printing to it. Um, so we've got this piece ready to go and that one looks like that should fit just fine. And this is the kind of stuff you want to make sure you clean up before you uh, attempt assembling this, right? So once you've test fitted everything, you're just going to want to take this glue and just lay a very small amount in here. And I find the best way to do this is to just kind of do it in little, little sections. You don't need a ton of glue. You're just gonna get this to stay there and then that's, 
That's all there is to it. Now I find using things like your flush cutters, a metal ruler, all of this works really well for getting these into their respective slots and not getting a lot of super glue on your finger. So that's it. That, that's literally all you have to do to get that to, to stay in place. Uh, don't worry about making it fit perfectly. Um, it, it just needs to come in contact with that super glue. And then, you know, 30 minutes from now, this thing will be solid. You won't have to worry about the glue coming out. You just wanna make sure you've got it somewhat close to flush. All right, so that's it. Um, repeat the rest of the process for this. Try to do your best to uh, make sure they stick good, and then we'll move on to the polishing. So now what we're gonna do is make this piece look just like this piece, right? We wanna add this aged look, and then we also wanna polish it up a little bit so we get some shine. Got a whole bunch of different uh, rub and buff colors here. And uh, if you've never used rub and buff, in my opinion, it's like cheap mode for like all kinds of stuff. I love this stuff. It works really, really well. So I put both colors right on this little mat right here. This is just a piece of blue shop towel. Use whatever color you want or whatever kind of shop towel you want. I don't recommend microfiber because it absorbs a lot. Um, and then, you know, you're just gonna wanna hit this in a, in a couple of places kind of rough, you know, like a full dirt. And then I just hit it all over, right? Just because, you know, somebody grabbed this out of a dumpster, you know, that's kind of like my thought process on this. Yeah, I grabbed this out of a dumpster. Looks like it'll probably work okay. It's been in the trash for a long period of time. Uh, the other thing I would recommend when you're doing this as well is make sure you get the back too. Now you'd be like, well, nobody sees the back. I get it. I, I don't see the back either. But the, uh, the reason we want to do the back is just kind of give that continuous look. See, like here's a great example, right? It, it comes around the corner and it bends. All right, so once you've hit this in a few spots, then start, start kind of flushing it out a little bit further by you know, spreading it in its same area. So there we go. We hit that pretty good with all of the rub and buff. And what I do is I get a fresh towel and I just kind of come around again and I'm gonna try to get as much of the rub and buff off as I can. So there we go, that, that pretty much aged it. Uh, so when we compare the two, that looks, looks pretty close. Uh, it's not the same, but never will be. Um, very similar. Okay, so now let's move on to the polishing. What I use is this, it's called Feed and Wax, and it's a wood polish and conditioner, so it's not gonna seal things, it's not gonna make it uh, you know, watertight, like sealing it with a varnish or a lacquer will, but what it will do is cosmetically brighten it up, add a little bit of shine to it, and you can add this on any 3D print at any time. Uh, you can even continue to polish it up if you want to and build up a layer of wax. I use uh, a towel over and over and over again. Um, this feed and wax has uh, like orange oil, I think, in it. Uh, it smells very much like that orange citrus oil and beeswax. And then what it does is it, it's in kind of like this goo. Um, and I don't apply the goo directly to it. What I, what I like to do is put a bunch in there, then fold the material over. You know, feed and wax is inside that material, and then. I like to use that other side and get a nice heavy coat. And you can see here, even just hitting this with this first pass, it's already getting all kinds of different shine and sheen to it. 
and it's starting to look really nice. Got my heat gun and we're just gonna hit this with a little bit of heat. Now what I like to do when I'm doing this and hitting it with a heat gun is make sure my hands are, are close to it. Um, you wanna make sure that you're feeling the print. The idea here is to just add enough heat so that way the rub and buff evaporates some of the chemicals that are in it. It goes into the layer lines and then we're gonna hit it with another another coat. All right, so I've hit this with the heat gun. I can feel my print is warm, but you know, not hot or melty. Um, so now we're gonna use these. So uh, these are some disposable microfiber wipes that I picked up on Amazon. I'll have a link in the description. This is what I use. If you have a different microfiber cloth of choice, feel free to uh, use that. Go through the whole print again. And this time you're trying to get everything off of it. So this microfiber works as almost like a buffing type compound, if you will. Um, it, it really gets in there, takes out a lot of the different oils and that that we just put on it. And it polishes it as well. So to enhance the quality of the sound, what I do with these speakers is I line them with strips of EVA foam, and then I attach it to the sides of the enclosure. This provides excellent sound baffling. It helps absorb the unwanted resonances and echoes inside the enclosure, resulting in cleaner, more defined sound. So to help this, I also add polyfill, which also improves the low end response by mimicking a much larger enclosure. Combine these create a more refined sound that you get out of these speakers so they don't sound like a cheap plastic enclosure. Just take a little bit of time, line the inside with these pieces, and then we'll move on to inserting the speaker into the enclosure. Okay, so now that we've got the uh, EVA foam on the outside, uh, the next step is to place the speaker inside. You can see down here, there's this channel. Uh, the speaker ring will just fit right into that channel. Now you can turn it over and you'll see here that there's actually plenty of room here for the four inch speaker. So what I like to do is, um, and you can use uh, super glue in there or I can use uh, hot glue. Just gonna drop our glue in here. We'll just cover the holes too. Really doesn't matter. Just be careful not to get any on the speaker and you're good. All right, so now that we've got that glue on there, quick like a bunny, we'll get this inside our enclosure here. We'll line this up and then that channel allows us to, to fit in place nice and easy. And there we go. So uh, got plenty of cable length here. So what we're gonna do now is fill this rest of this unit up with polyfill um, and then we're gonna attach the back. Okay, so now we're gonna add the polyfill to the internal enclosure here. Uh, I've got a just a big wad of it here. Uh, I really don't have a way to measure this or tell you how much to put in, uh, but I can say this, the idea here is to just add some baffling in here that will help reduce some of the vibrations and you wanna leave room for the base port. So now that we're, we're done with the polyfill, it's just a matter of uh, hooking up our back plate here that we started working on first. And the reason we did that first is now we're at the rewarding part uh, where we get to test this out. 
So attach those like that. Make sure polyfill is in there. And if you're lucky, you can at least press fit it to test out the speaker. Uh, what I do is I go back and put a little glue in there. All right, so now we're gonna hook up the wire connections to here and we're gonna test this out and uh, we'll see how it sounds. So let's see how the speaker sounds. So I know it's never gonna sound this great because it's coming through the mic here, but it, it sounds really good. Um, you know, I've, I've bought Logitech speakers that haven't sounded as good as this uh, right out of the box. So given that uh, the speakers I used in this, I think were like uh, 15 bucks or 10 bucks. It's like $5 a pair. It actually sounds uh, pretty good, especially with this bass drop. You know, it's got a lot of bass there. You can, you can actually hear that bass. So as you can see, putting these together, really a pretty simple project. And if you're new to 3D printing, this is a great project that you can do that will really enable you to showcase what can be done with 3D printing at a very, very small cost. Total out the door, you should be able to spend about $40 to build this project, depending on whether or not you've got an amplifier, but there's some really, really cheap ones out there uh, that really make it easy for you to build this and give away a high quality speaker or use a high quality speaker without spending a lot of money. So uh, making really puts this into your power and it's one of the passions that I love is just being able to produce things uh, that are better quality than something you buy off the shelf. So that's gonna kind of wrap up today's video. Once again, wanna thank all of my patrons and everyone else that has stuck with me over the course of the year. You're gonna start to see a lot of behind the scenes content start to get produced, uh, but I wanted to have one video to kind of kick things off and this was that video. So with all that, I wanna say thanks again for watching and we'll see you all next time. <laughs>